Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is June the 14th, 2016. I'm at American Action News at an article titled Breaking Orlando Shooter's Shocking Secret. That's dated June the 14th, 2016. Well, I have talked about Bajabazi. And if you are an Afghani immigrant, you know all about Bajabazi. It's no big secret, folks. A shocking new development in the case of Omar Mateen, the radical Islamic lowlife who shot up an Orlando gay nightclub, he might have been a regular. Omar Mateen was more than just a homicidal jihadist-inspired homophobe when he shot his way through an Orlando nightclub early Sunday morning, according to a couple of the establishment regulars. He was also a repeat visitor. A drag-dancing married couple described seeing Mateen as many as a dozen times at the gay-friendly nightclub where he'd later embark on the single worst gun massacre in modern American history. Ty Smith and Chris Callan recall the eventual killer being escorted drunk from the Pulse Bar on multiple occasions, including one incident where he pointed a knife to a friend. Both professed shock at seeing his face on TV. It's the same guy, said Callan, who performs under the name Christina McLaughlin. He's been going to this bar for at least three years. They expressed incredulity at the story being told by Mateen's father in the wake of the shooting, that the gunman had once been scandalized during a visit to Miami by the sight of men kissing each other. They say Mateen saw plenty of men kiss and far closer to home than Miami. That's bull crap right there. No offense. That's straight up crap. He's been around us, Smith said Monday in an interview with the Gay and Lesbian Community Center at Central Florida. Some of these people did a little more than kiss outside the bar. He was partying with the people who supposedly drove him to do this? Smith said the sometimes visitor would show up with a buddy and let loose in a way he couldn't when he was closer to the family's home in Port St. Lucie. He got really, really drunk. He couldn't drink when he was at home around his wife or family. His father was really strict. He used to bitch about it. Neither Smith nor Callan would speculate on the sex life of the man who called police from inside the club early Sunday to profess his allegiance to a Middle East militant leader as he gunned down at least 49 people in cold blood, but they expressed doubt over the family story. So do you think that possibly this imam's visit to that mosque that was 26 minutes away from the nightclub, do you think this guy may have went and saw this imam? Do you think he may have heard this imam say about a month before? Death is the sentence. I mean, look, there's nothing to be embarrassed about this. That death is the sentence. Do you think he may have heard this imam? Telling people to kill gays? That was just about a month prior to the shooting. Let's get back to the article here. Other news reports fed the intrigue over his identity. An anonymous classmate from Mateen's Police Academy reportedly told the Palm Beach Post that Mateen was gay, that he'd been asked out by Mateen, and they'd gone together to different gay bars at the time. The Daily Beast, meanwhile, reported that the gunman frequently lunched at a diner where the waiter was an openly gay high school classmate and drag queen. The classmate, Samuel King, said Mateen voiced no issues with gays and might have joined him at a drag show once or twice. In separate interviews, both Colin and Smith described one incident that unnerved them. They said they decided to keep their distance from Mateen after he exploded in anger at a joke told by one of their friends, possibly about religion. He ended up pulling a knife, Callan said. He said if he ever mess with him again, you know how it'll turn out. The Los Angeles Times is reporting that Mateen also used a gay dating phone application. Was Mateen's violent act and previous radicalism driven by his sexual confusion? What do you think? I'll tell you what I think. Or, better yet, let me tell you something that I know. I did a video here titled, U.S. Soldier Finally Gets Help from Virginia Congress, and that was from March 1, 2016. It was about Sergeant First Class Charles Martland. Okay? Now, I'm not going to go into what happened to him, because he was finally exonerated. 
but this goes back to all the Sharia compliance that we are expected to deal with in our nation. Our soldiers are feeling it more than ever. So I want you to look at a practice called Bachabazi. It is a practice that's done in Afghanistan. Bachabazi, well, I'll just let you look at it. Dancing Boys of Afghanistan, if you can stomach it. It is an education and it is what our military over there is witnessing and forced to close their eyes to. I'll let you see a little bit of what this Bachabazi is. <laughs> I'm going to stop it right there because it just pisses me off. Bachabazi means boy play. So I'll leave the link for this and the link for the Dancing Boys of Afghanistan video will be left under this video. And for the past, I'd say, couple of months, actually it was after March when I released this video, it seemed like I had seen quite a few. I think RT has done a couple documentaries on Bachabazi. But anyway, Bachabazi is something that in Afghanistan, when you have money, it's like a stigma that you have all these boys to play with and it is quite an education and it does make you sick but this is what we have to look forward to since our government has been taken over by the Muslim Brotherhood and people say well our government was taken over long ago blah 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 yes but when you look at Islam when you look at the Quran when you look at how they live their life over there this is totally foreign to us these people cannot assimilate they will not their religion tells them to take over so I just wanted to let you know that Bajabazi ladies and gentlemen this is Call of Duty Goddess signing off and as always I've got your six